Welcome back to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, global markets reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me at Market Site, we have Brian Joyce, managing director on NASDAQ's market intelligence desk. And we're here to take a fresh look at the charts on Bitcoin, everyone's favorite topic of conversation. Brian, as always, thanks so much for joining us um, on Trade Talks. Let's take a look at some Bitcoin comps. It's been kind of quiet in the news with Bitcoin, but creeping up a bit here. Yeah, lately the news, is, it's been coming back, but you know, particularly in the beginning of the year in January and December when it made its lows, um, the coverage was much lighter than what we saw, say, in 2017 when it was up more than 1,300%. What's interesting is the comparison from last year's decline where Bitcoin was down 84% from the prior December to the December of 18. Um, it's very similar to what we saw in 2014 when Bitcoin had declined 86% to its lows, which were made in January of 15. What's very interesting also is that not only were the percentage declines very similar, but the amount of time it took, the duration was about 12 to 14 months for each. And finally, this yellow uh, moving average right here is the 200 week moving average, which is used by many technicians as a secular guide as to you know, where securities could bottom during a significant correction. We saw the S&P 500 bottom as its 200 week in December. Here's Bitcoin, it did it in, uh, in, uh, in December of 18, and it did the same thing back here in January of 15. And really for a lot of 2015, when it was consolidating sideways, it bottomed at that 400 week average that um, was clearly a, um, a, su a support level on numerous occasions. So those three things combined made me think back in January, you know, could this be the bottom in here of Bitcoin? We had highlighted it on a number of occasions, and more recently, beginning in April, we kind of began to see that turn. It'll be interesting to see if this sets up for a longer term pattern, but let's take a deeper dive into the technicals um, with the upside reversal, something you have identified. Right, so um, we had a, about three to four months of sideways price action. You see on the chart, beginning in April, this is a weekly price chart. We had that big green candlestick. It broke out from the declining trend line. Um, part of that move was back-to-back -back days of 16 and 10 percent for the week. In the first week of April, it was up about 23 percent. You see it then stalling at the 200-day or the 40-week moving average. It's essentially the same thing. It went sideways uh, for about three weeks, and then last week and now this week, it's making its move higher again. What's key right now is that it's moving up through that 5,900 to 6,100 price range, which, as you can see, throughout much of 2018 was clearly defined support level. So price support is now expected to be resistance. The theory is all of these buyers, which previously had done well, if you had bought 60 or 6,000 in 18, you had moves of 90%, 50%, 30% on a number of occasions after um, price had reached that level. So um, those buyers who then got stuck long Bitcoin as it broke down through that level in the fourth quarter are now most likely looking to get out at or near flat. So that's why we expect some resistance here right now. It doesn't have to come. So what's key is what I'm doing is really just watching the price action to see if this week makes some sort of topping pattern or next week some sort of topping pattern, um, which I think a lot of people are looking at. So right. usually when there's a lot of eyes on a certain level, sometimes the opposite happens of what you would expect. So maybe Bitcoin can slice uh, through all of that overhead supply. So it's just something to watch out for. All right, let's shift gears. Let's talk about equities here. And if we take a look yes. at the S&P 500, you've identified a bullish reversal. Clearly, that chart shows the pattern there. Yeah, so you know, it seems like you know, we've only had a week or so of selling, but it seems like uh, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, sentiment out there is a lot more bearish than what I think the price action is actually showing. The internals are still not great. We're not seeing a lot of stocks making new 52-week highs. Um, and that was the case running into the highs that we made last week. But if we zoom out a little bit, we could see the S&P 500 rallied 26% off the de December lows, 608 points. The only real pullback we had was here in early March. We had about a 3% pullback. We dipped down back below the, um, the moving average, the 200-day moving average for one trading session, and then quickly back above it. Today we have... Um, Today's, at today's low, we have a 4% decline of last week's high. So we're currently right now in the midst of the biggest pullback since December. But again, look, we're, we've, uh, we've reversed higher off today's lows. We're back above that 50-day moving average. We haven't dipped below the 50-day since January. So that's a common trend line that uh, portfolio managers will use as a guide to buy securities, in this case an index, um, on pullbacks during significant uptrends, which I think is what we have here now. If the 50-day doesn't break or doesn't hold, I think you have much greater support between the 2800 and the 2816 level, 
for a number of reasons. Um, we call that a cluster of technical support. Um, this zone was resistance in October, November, December, and then again in February and March before we finally broke out above it in April. So it uh, would not surprise me if we have a retest of that level. It also coincides with the 23.6% Fibonacci retracement line as well, which is about as minimal as it gets as far as corrections go. Right, it's really interesting to see how the price action is indicative of what we're seeing fundamentally in the market as well. There's just so much uncertainty out there, and I would imagine people are looking to establish fresh buying points, but it's this week in particular, there's just so much uncertainty out there. Yeah, I mean, especially when, with you know, the China story, you know, it's, it's a big deal, it's, obviously. It's been in the headlines now for quite some mm -hmm. time, so. Um, and there is a lot of optimism priced in too. There is a lot of optimism priced in, you know, right, so Brian. we'll see how this plays out. Thank you so much, as always, for joining me on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.